Hello and welcome to the start of a brand new AI based series. This time we're taking a look at making a shooter deathmatch bot AI. So making AI that walks around a map naturally and will attack the player on sight and do some dodging and jumping and things like that to avoid uh, shots from the player. Now, if you want to start off with the project I'm using here, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find these project files along with the rest of the project files I have available where you can play along and follow along in all the videos with this exact same project. Otherwise, use your own projects, it's totally okay, it all works the same and you can create your own maps uh, for this uh, similar code. Okay, so to get started in here, we need to first of all set up our bot AI character and AI components. So I'm going to go into add a new folder and we'll call it AI. And we're going to create a new blueprint class of a character. We'll call it bot. We're also going to make a blueprint class AI controller. And if you followed any of my previous AI controller, AI series, sorry, oh, you all do this all the time. You'll see this happen pretty much in every series. But you create a the character, you create the controller that will con control the character, sorry and we'll call that one bot ai and then alongside that we're going to have a behavior tree to handle the decision making the bot is going to be doing so we're going to go into artificial intelligence and choose behavior tree and we'll call it simply just bot behavior tree and we also need a blackboard alongside that to store temporary values between each of the different actors so now we've got to hook all these up together we're going to go into our bot character first of all and in here I'm going to set the mesh to a robot one that I've included already in this project it was free in the marketplace at one month or something like that so I'm just using this robot here obviously you can use the mannequin if you so wish and I'm just going to position this like so and rotate it to face the arrow make sure it is facing it the same way as the arrow now I want it to use the same uh, animation blueprint as my animation starter pack, which is free on the marketplace. Um, but the issue is that it doesn't know anything about it because it's not the same skeleton. You can easily fix that if you go into finding that robot here. I can go to the skeleton here, the mesh here, change the skeleton, assign skeleton, and I'm going to choose the one that's in the animation starter pack. There. And that will now work with this bot here. There you go. So there he is. I'm also going to put a gun in his hand as well. So I'm going to have another uh, skeletal mesh. Not a robot, but a gun. And I'm going to attach that to this mesh here. Now, the way you attach a gun to the mesh is you drag it onto the mesh there. So it's attached. And then go to the sockets on the right-hand side, a little magnifying glass. And you can choose what you want to attach it to. So I'm going to attach it to the hand R, which is the right hand. I can find it. There it is. And you see it's got this weird offset. That's because the location over here is set to 90 in the Z. Just zero that in and then you just reposition it to line it up uh, as best you can. That'll do. Doesn't have to be too exact, as we're mostly focusing on just the AI part of the character here. So we've now got this robot here, and we'll make sure it's using the same uh, AI controller that we just made. So to do that, you go to the class defaults and choose the AI controller class to your bot AI. Oh, and save. We're going to close that now and go into our bot AI. 
And we're going to tell our bot AI to simply just run our behavior tree. So on begin play, do run behavior tree. And choose our bot behavior tree. That's all we have to do on there for now. And that's it. So now if I drag him into the world, we are ready to start adding some code to him. So first thing you need to do is make sure you've got a navigation mesh in your level. Now, if you have downloaded a pack like I have here, you would uh, hit P and you should see the nav mesh I've already put in there for you. Otherwise, you drag out a nav mesh from the volume list on the left here and drag it in and size it to cover the whole level that you want the character to run around in. And anything green means that they can reach that point. Okay, so if it's connected, they can reach it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to work on is the EQS system. Uh, and that's going to be basically getting this character to run around uh, the environment based on its EQS. Now, EQS is Environmental Query System. So it's a way of making the AI uh, query the environment for particular uh, uh, filters and criteria to find the best place for it to go. So what we're going to be doing here is making a new EQS. So you go over to the AI and do environmental query. And this one we're going to call navigation query. And we're going to open this up. Now the EQS query has to first of all generate some points before you can do any sort of tasks on it. So the generation of points we can drag out from this route here and you'll see different generation op uh, options. And we're going to be generating a uh, a grid and it, by default will generate around the querier so whoever's calling this query it will generate around them now when testing EQS the thing you really want to work on is have an EQS testing pawn this is a pawn that Epic have provided you that makes it able to easily test EQS uh, conditions but to add one you go to blueprint class and just search for EQS and you'll find EQS testing pawn Create one of those and name it testing pawn. And if I drag it into the world like so, it is there. Now, with it selected on the right hand side details panel, you can choose what query you want to use. So I'm going to drag my navigation query into there, and you can see the grid of points that are being generated. Now, at the moment, the default way it does this is very, very condensed. And I would not recommend this because this is way too uh, uh, specific. So we're going to go into here and we're going to change the way it generates it. Because we don't want too many because it will really lag out and be annoying to uh, calculate so many points in your environment. So we're going to change the grid half size and the space between. Now, the grid half size isn't too bad. I think I want to keep the 500 there. So it's 500 this way and 500 this way. I want to change the spacing between the points. So at the moment it's 100, meaning I get five either side. But what I'm going to do is increase that to 250. And you get this far more spaced out uh, grid point selection here. Okay. Now at the moment it's generating around a query. So whoever's calling the query, it's generating around them. However, what I really wanted to do is to choose points around the map instead of the query. So for that, we're going to change it to a different context. Now, a context is a thing that you can tell it to generate around. A, the query is a type of context. So we make a quick context type here. Then you go to blueprint class and just search for the word context. you'll find environmental query context use that loop in base and click select and we're going to name our context bot context now the context is a class that will basically fetch a list of actors and assign it as uh, uh, viable context locations so in here we're going to make an actor base so we're going to go in here make a new blueprint class and it's just be an actor and we'll call this one bot point of interest. And we want to place it around the map to indicate where we want the bot to go. Because we don't want them to go absolutely anywhere. We want to specify where they want to go. So we're going to open bot point of interest. 
and we're going to add a billboard to it so we can easily identify it in the world that'll do compile and close that then on our bot context open this up and go to the functions on the left hand side and you can override different functions here and we want to provide a actors set this gets us a list of actors that we can output as an array so we're going to get all actors of class and choose our bot point of interest and plug it in to resulting actor set so this is now collecting those actors and storing them here so then we're on our eqs here we can generate these around a different context use the bot context and that will now generate around those points of interest instead hit save and then go into your world now you notice the points aren't generated around the testing point anymore instead they will now generate around these points of interest so if you drag this point of interest out here and then select the point uh the testing point here we have to raise it up a little bit and then select the testing point uh, if you don't immediately show up like this you probably just need to save the query again and you saw it come up there like so so just add these points of interest around the map where you want your bot to kind of like head towards and target and so we're going to place these over the map here we're going to place one over here and i'm going to place one in here place one in here And the other side. Now, if I set the testing pawn and hit uh, open up the query, close it, you will see these points now generate around the map at those locations. So the pawn isn't just going to go randomly into like this corner here. He will go round about here when he's navigating, run around the map. But if you're a player, for example, looking for enemies, you're not going to run around here and then hide in the corner. It's typically, anyway, when you're running around. Uh, instead, you're going to run around like a loop, basically. And that's what we're trying to replicate, is that sort of loop you do when you do like Call of Duty and things like that. And that brings us to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll add queries and criteria to each of these points to score them on base and tell it which point this bot is going to go to. So join us at the next episode over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley right now where you can donate just $1 and get access to that video plus all my other videos well before everyone else. If you're watching this and you have yet to subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions about any of these systems here, leave a comment below and I'll help you out as best I can. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.